Now that our project dependencies are downloaded, we want to set up our framework so we can start building this authentication system onto it. So we're going to look at uh, a very brief project structure and we'll be adding to this later on, but this will give you a good idea of how things are going to be set up. So over in my browser then, we're just in the root directory uh, that we're working in, but we want a public directory. This is where our index.php file is going to be stored. And this is also where our things like uh, CSS files, JavaScript files, anything you want to add to this after you finish the series, that's where you're going to store all of that. This allows us to keep our public files separate from our project files. We're not going to be creating lots of different files within one directory. So let's first of all create this public folder then. So we create that in our root directory here and let's create a new file in here and we'll call that index.php. So that's the first file that we get. So let's navigate over to public and this is where we are going to be working within this series. So there's nothing here at the moment but inside of here we want to bootstrap our application. So our app files are going to be created in a new folder called app. So we're separating application files from public files. So again, you can create new folders in here for your CSS and your JavaScript if you want to add them later on. So to bootstrap our application, we need a start file within app. So let's create that now. I'm going to call that start.php or you can call it bootstrap.php, whatever you want. And inside of here, we need to do a few things. Because we are building an authentication system, we need to start sessions, we need to load in our composer dependencies, and then we need to boot up our slim application so we can start writing the roots, which we'll look at later. So don't worry if uh, you're not too familiar with routing. So first thing then, we are going to start sessions. So we're going to say session cache limiter false and then session start that's the first step the next step is to define our include root so let's do this now as a global all we do is we define include root as using the dir name function and then we have dir in here so what does this give us so let's just echo our inc root now, obviously, this file here, this start file, won't be accessed at the moment because uh, we're on index.php. But all of this, all of this bootstrapping in here needs to happen. So we need to require it in from here. So we're going to go back a directory into app and pull in start.php. So now when I refresh, you can see the full path to this app authentication directory. This just makes it easier to include files along the way. So I'm currently working in users, Alex Garrett, Dropbox, htdocs, tutorials, authentication, but this is likely going to look different to you. So don't worry if it does. So now inside of our bootstrap, we want to require in all of our project dependencies. You might have, might have been wondering, how do we include all of these files that we included in the last part? Well, if you look inside the vendor directory, you'll have an autoload.php file. All this does is it requires in all of your project dependencies and any class maps or auto loading you've defined within Composer. And we'll be looking at that later. So all we need to do then is require in ink root, and then we're going to append on vendor autoload.php. And that is it. That is every single one of our dependencies included into our application so we can start using them. So just very quickly, what I am going to be doing is in my PHP configuration, I have display errors turned off, which is sensible even on a production environment. But just for the purpose of this series, I'm going to turn them on. So up here, uh, we'll just do it after our session start, actually. I'm going to say INI sets, that's our PHP uh, initialization file, display errors on and that means that if we do come across any errors we're definitely going to see them and we're not going to see blank white pages which can be really confusing so that is pretty much it just for the basics we have all of our dependencies loaded in uh, we have sessions started now we want to focus on building up the actual framework which is our slim application and this is very straightforward 
All we need is an app variable which will serve as our entire application. So everything will be attached to app. And here we create a new slim instance. And that is it. We can now create routes, which is essentially in your URL, um, just pages that your users are going to visit. And we can define any options from this. So let's see what happens when we refresh our browser. We will get an error. And we see class slim not found. Now the reason for this is slim, as well as all of our other packages, are namespaced. Now we'll be looking at namespacing throughout this video and it's a really important concept within uh, development. So if we just open up slim here, you don't have to do this, I'll just show you. And then we open up the slim file here. You can see if we scroll down, we've got this class slim, which we've just created a new instance of, but it's namespaced under slim. Now, the reason that we namespace is so we don't have conflicts. If, for example, another package had a class called slim, we would be in trouble because we have two classes with exactly the same name and we don't want this. So at the top of this file, we're going to say use slim slim. So this is the top level namespace and this is the class name. What you could also do is say new slim slim and get rid of that. But I'd highly advise you use uh, import statements at the top here rather than doing that because it just makes it a little bit easier to manage. So now we won't get the error because we've defined the correct namespace and we just see an empty page. That's not because there are errors, we just haven't done anything yet. So let's say app get, and this is might be a slightly new concept, but routing is essentially defining URLs that your users can visit and then from them URLs you can execute code. This means that we don't have to create in our public directory uh, login.php, register.php, change password.php, and this keeps our application nice and tidy. And we'll be separating these routes into different files. So, for example, when you go back to your application and you want to say, oh, I want to update the way change password works, you can just go straight into that single route and update what you need. You don't have to mess around with huge files with lots of code in. So, I'm going to say app get forward slash uh, test. And then I'm going to define in here a callback. So this is just a function like this. And all this is going to do is inside of this function, when we hit this in the URL, it's just going to execute the code inside of here. So I'm just going to say this is a test root. So this is naturally going to work at the moment, and we'll see why in a minute. So when I hit test, we see not found. And this is just a standard web server error. The requested URL cannot be found. And it's this test directory. So at the moment, our web server is thinking that we are looking for a directory. Now I'm using Apache, which means I can create an HT access file in my public directory, which will re route all requests after public into index.php. Then Slim can pick them up and execute the right code. So let's go over to our public directory and create a new file. And let's call this dot ht access like so with a dot like that. So let's save this out. And this uh, is just pretty much standard code that you would find in any ht access file that routes very basic requests through to a file. All we're doing here is rewrite, turn, turning rewriting on. We're taking anything after this public uh, forward slash and we're routing it into index.php. And all that means then is that these requests will be passed through into uh, our start file and then they'll be outputted. Now I've just realized that inside of index.php we haven't actually run the slim app. And that was why we didn't see anything when we were on test or even on the home page. So that was my bad, but let's go ahead and just change that. In here we're gonna say app run. So now when we go over to our home page, we see a 404 not found. So this is just a slim 404 not found error. And I don't worry about this because it's all it means is we don't have a route set up for our home page. But if I now go to test, you'll see this is a test route. And obviously this can be absolutely anything. We can include things like placeholders in here. So for example, name, we can pull in the name and then we can say something like, hello name like so so we could go ahead and say test tabby like that 
And that's how we pass data into our application via the URL if we need to. Okay, so let's get rid of this test route because we know that that is all up and running. We now have our index.php file, which is bootstrapping our application and then running our application. And we have our HT access to handle the routing. We looked at an example of a test route, which we're going to be creating a lot of for every single page on our site. And we are pretty much ready to go now. However, what we do need to tackle in the next part is setting up configuration, which can be really boring. But trust me, this is going to give us a really easy way of providing database configuration, uh, providing session configuration, hashing configuration, anything we need to do within our application. It's going to save you a lot of time in the future. So in the next video, we'll look at setting up configuration with that package we installed earlier and uh, switching modes between development and production when we need to.